ever hit resistance or there's no answer or God shows me something that the enemy wants to do, I know he can't do it without a legal right. Let me finish with this. Just one more personal story. Let me tell you where this really got me. We have a son named Adam. He's 32 years old now. But Adam was married, had a little girl, was a youth pastor up in the Spokane area of Washington. His wife decided she didn't want to be in the ministry, wanted to move back to Texas, so he moved back to Texas. He got a salvage thing. Long story short, they ended up divorced. He did not want a divorce. He did everything in his power to stop the divorce. But they got a divorce. He was devastated. For two years, I tried to get him out of the depression he was in. I could not get him out. I tried personally when I look at him, encouraging him, telling him God was it through, that God's a redeemer and God loves and God forgives and God heals and God does everything, all these things. And it was just like, you know, bouncing off. I mean, he wasn't mad or he wasn't mean or anything like that because that's not son Adam. But he was just completely depressed. I prayed for two years. I bound, I loosed. I opened, I shut. I yelled, I screamed. I whispered. I did everything I knew to do. Nothing happened. It only got worse for two years. I warred on the battlefield of the spirit. The way that what I knew to do, what I'd been taught to do. And we're warriors. And you run at the devil like data did. You take him down and do all that stuff. That's who I am by nature. I did all that. Nothing worked. It got worse. Worse and worse. Along with everything else falling to pieces around us. It was not a good time. So one morning I go to prayer. After two years I go to prayer. And one more time. And I remember I got to my prayer time. I start to bring Adam to the Lord. And this time as I brought him to the Lord. The Lord said bring him to my courts. I heard that clear as I could. I heard him say, bring him to my course. Now, I had just a little bit of an understanding. And so I thought, okay, let me give you scripture. Romans 8, 26. When we don't know how to pray as we ought, the Spirit helps our weakness. That's a good scripture. Because I don't know how to pray so often. And especially in the courts. And so I thought, Lord, I'm going to do this because you said do it. But you're going to have to help me. So this is the way I started. I began to repent for Adam's sins. He said, how could you do that? Because I'm his father and I'm an intercessor. And intercessors do for others what they can't do for themselves until they can. So I began to repent for Adam's sins. I, I said, Lord, I repent for any failure as a father. I repent for any failure as a husband. I repent for Adam having believed the lies of the enemy and is now in this deep place of depression. And anything I felt, sensed, knew, whatever, I repented. It, it took like only five minutes. I suddenly felt this shift. Then the Lord said something to me. He said, now you repent. For all the negative, critical things you've said about Adam in your frustration to his mother. Because I'd never said anything negative about Adam to Adam. But I had said stuff to his mother. I don't understand why he did this, why he did this, why this choice was made. This was wrong. I don't understand it. We don't do this. I'd said those kind of things in frustration to his mother about Adam. And the Lord said, because the accuser is taking your words and is saying even his own father says this about him my position of authority in Adam's life gave the accuser the right to use my words so I repented with tears when I repented for Adam I'm just going through the process now I'm crying because I'm realizing I'm one of the problems. And I'm saying, Lord, please forgive me. I'm so sorry for the negative, critical things I've said about Adam. I ask, please, Lord, that your blood would annul those words. So that the accuser cannot build cases with him against my son. And I felt this shift. Then I 
heard the Lord. The Lord was so gracious. Then I heard the Lord say, now prophesy his destiny. Now you've got to understand, what I just done, without knowing it, was deal with the legal issues the enemy had to hold him in depression. I dealt with his sin, my words, my sin. I dealt with enough there that I had taken away the legal issues that the enemy was using to stop my prayers from having an effect. Now he says prophesy his destiny. I didn't understand this, but what I was about to do was I was about to present a case in the courts of heaven because that's what you do when you prophesy someone's destiny. You are prophesying from their book and what is written about them in heaven. Because on the day Adam was born, the Lord said to me when I was sitting in a chair outside of our room while Mary was sleeping in the bedroom after Adam was born. And the Lord said to me, how beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news. And the Lord said, I thought, what is this? We take him to the services the ne very next Sunday. And our pastor lifted him up. And he said these words, how beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of those that bring good news. I went to Brother Walker. I said, why did you say that? He said, because that's what God says about him. It's always been true. That's why he was in the ministry. So I began to prophesy. I said, Lord, you said how beautiful upon the mountain. I say Adam's feet are destined to walk upon the high places, the places of great influence. He will preach the gospel with great power and influence. I say even to the nations of the earth. And I began to prophesy his destiny. As I did that, the spirit of the Lord said, now rebuke the spirit of depression. I'll never forget it. I said, and I say according to Ephesians chapter 5 over you, Adam. I say, awake you that sleep, and Christ shall give you light. And I declare, spirit of depression, you must go now in Jesus' name. And when I did that, a major shift happened. It took about 15 minutes total to do all of that. And I got up and I thought, wow. That was completely different. I don't even know everything I just did. I just know that I was before the court of heaven presenting cases. And somehow or another, something has happened. So one and a half weeks later, life is going on. My phone rings. And I look and it says Adam. Well, I never saw Adam because he was always locked up in a room or whatever. He was just nowhere to be found. And I looked at the phone and said, Adam. So I punched the button. I said, hey, Adam. He said, hey, Dad, he said, this is verbatim. He said, can I talk to you for a second? I said, yeah, sure. And then he said these words. He said, I do not know what happened. But a week and a half ago, all the depression left me. And I am now ready to do God's will. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, oh God, you are the God of deliverance and yes, power, oh God. God. So Hallelujah. Good. Thank you, Lord. Watch what happened. He said that to me. We began to meet together. He said, can I meet with you and just we just start studying the word together? And I said, sure. At, guess where Adam is today? He pastors his own church an hour outside of Dallas, Texas. He's a full-time pastor for the Foursquare. I took a church that had 12 people in it a year and a half ago in a little town of 3,500 and now runs 100 or better. Watch this. They have made him overseer of churches in East Texas and northern uh, uh, Louisiana because they see the hand of God on him because he came free from all of that depression. <sighs> And he will stand up. I have him speak sometimes at our conferences. He will stand up and he says, I am a product of the courts of heaven. Because this is what I tell people. What I had not been able to do in two years on the battlefield, I did in 15 minutes in the courtroom. Everything shifted. See what happened? Luke 18. That though he bears long with you day and night, you cry out here for all these things. Watch this. When everything legal is set in place, the answer comes speedily. But sometimes it doesn't, you don't get everything legal in place all at once. But God was gracious and, and, and wanted me to learn this. 
because I've been running around for six years teaching this. Watching miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle happen all over the nations of the earth. This is not a magic wand to swing over people. These are principles and concepts of that third dimension of prayer that can help us come into that place of breakthrough. Amen? So would you stand with me?